Hello everyone, a very warm welcome to my weekly update. Another busy week rounding off yesterday in London with the pig crisis meeting, a meeting that we had called alongside the National Pig Association to try and resolve the unprecedented situation that pig farmers are facing with 40,000 healthy pigs culled to date, a 200,000 pig backlog on farm and a contraction as well in the pig sector of 10% and rising. So I would describe it as catastrophic market failure. Um, an official in the meeting yesterday made reference continually to the animal welfare situation, which of course is at the forefront of all of our minds. And I also made the case, this is a humanitarian crisis, I might add as well, and the human health impact cannot be underestimated of what pig farmers are going through. I think the emotion was raw from the farmers that made the case yesterday and they made it exceptionally well. And ultimately we need to see action because if we don't see action, we will see further contraction and that will mean that we just import more of our pork. So this very successful, unsupported, progressive sector, you know, we have to be able to look at the long-term economic health of that sector and make sure that we maintain it and where possible that we grow it. And I feel to witness what is happening at the moment is just totally unacceptable. Um, there were, I think, representations from all of the major retailers there. All the processors were there. And as I say, there were uh, pig farmers there as well. And Rob Mutimer, who's the chair of the National Pig Association, and Dr Zoe Davis, the chief executive, were alongside me yesterday. I think we really did get the challenges across. Um, there does need to be a lot done. I think we need to see that direct aid coming back to the farmers. The processors agreed with that. We need to see carcass balance promotion from the retailers working with AHDB. And we need to make sure that we've got a workforce. I mean, ultimately, if if we had been listened to in April and those butchers had been put in place at the very beginning, we would not have been in that room yesterday. So although government wants to, to not talk about Labour, and it was very frustrating to me that Home Office were not in that meeting and that we have still, the NFU and the National Pig Association, not had a meeting uh, with ministers in the Home Office, if we had resolved the situation, if we had been listened to in April, we would have not been where we are today. And it has to be sorted out. So there are actions that the farming minister is progressing. She has agreed to meet with the industry as often as it takes to resolve it. And we will continue to hold government to account to get this situation sorted out. I also, uh, on the similar note really, was fortunate enough, I had a meeting booked in to see um, the Chancellor of the Duchy of Lancaster, who is of course now the Prime Minister's Chief of Staff, Steve Barclay. That meeting was booked in earlier in the week and I was delighted that Steve Barclay kept uh, the meeting in place. When we talked about, again, the issues in the pig sector, I think they very much took away that this issue had been raised uh, back in April. Um, we've got to find a, a better way now. We're out of the EU, now we're out of the settled state way of working. You know, we cannot keep uh, reacting um, the, the way we are at the moment. And government has a, a pivotal role uh, in all of this. And I guess the point I was really trying to land is, you know, it's not just about food supply. It is about food production. It is about an overarching strategy that ultimately brings the Department of International Trade, DEFRA, Home Office and others into the greater ambition is that how we maintain our self-sufficiency at 60% and indeed how we grow it in, in other areas. So uh, I'm pleased that he met us. He's been incredibly helpful and enormous thanks to him on seasonal workers. Um, there are allies out there who are doing a lot for us. It just all needs joining up and it's the join up that, that just doesn't seem to be happening right now. Anyway, that is work in progress, but uh, a busy time also for the whole of the team. Nick von Westenholtz gave uh, evidence on the Australian trade deal to the EFRA committee. Um, so it's been go, go, go. And I've just heard uh, now that on the back of my meeting with Penny Mordant, who is, of course, uh, a minister within the Department of International Trade, that she would like to have an on-farm meeting to discuss things further. So we will keep discussing, we will keep holding to account, we will keep putting the solutions in place for government. 
Um, but I do hope everybody is well. Please stay well. Please do look after yourselves as ever. And I look forward to speaking to you again next week. Many thanks. <laughs>